We were introduced to the artist Auguste Scherft, who visited Lahore, who painted Maharaja Shir Singh. That's the image, that's the title image of the exhibition. Scherft was, he, he very much impressed the Sikhs with his skills. He, he was known for two things in particular, Scherft. He was a very, very quick painter, very swift. His technique was very swift, but, and he was also a notorious smoker, so he often painted whilst having a pipe in his mouth. He was given permission by Shir Singh to paint at the Golden Temple, and he was instructed to stand on top of Maharaja Ranjit Singh's house, which is, which is on the peri perimeter at the Golden Temple. He said you can, they said you can go up there and you can take your painting, make your view from there. He was also instructed that he mustn't smoke the Golden Temple because if he did, then the Nahangs who were in charge of the Akal Takht, they would be gravely offended and they might make an attempt on his life. He goes up to the roof of Ranjit Singh's house and he starts to paint his scene. He starts to paint that scene in his quick fashion, as he did, and he starts to move the brushes in and out of his mouth as he paints. From a distance, those warriors, those Nahangs, you know, with their conical blue turbans with quoits, they see him from a distance and they think he's smoking. So they charge towards him. They do make an attempt on his life. They don't ask any questions. They run up the stairwell. There's only one stairwell up. He sees them coming. He's quite a big, strong guy. This whole story is narrated to us by a friend of his who is Ranjit Singh's doctor, a man called Dr. Honigberger. And Scherf starts to rush down. He starts to rush down the stairwell. They're rushing up. They start to hit him in his face with their shields. They can't get enough room. He's getting cut, he's getting bruises. He runs out, he drops his pocket watch as a distraction. One of them goes to pick it up. He runs out of the Golden Temple complex. He falls over in a muddy puddle because his braces have been cut, his trousers have fallen down, he's got slashes on his back. One of Ranjit Singh's courtiers manages to rescue him, takes him to the side, cleans him up, disguises him, and later on that evening, gets him out of Amritsar. Very obviously, he has a real hatred towards those Nangs who made an attempt on his life. A few years on, the, you must have heard the word, the word thugs. The word thugs comes from an Indian word, tugs, villains, robbers. They were infamous at the time. The Victorians were hunting them down and wanting to uh, trial them and uh, just get rid of them. They were highway robbers who were causing a lot of problems. Scherft wanted to paint a scene of the thugs. So he visits a group of thugs in a jail and they tell him about how they would rob people and kill people. They make, he makes little models, little clay models and starts to construct a scene. And this is the painting that he paints. If you have a look at this scene, it's quite difficult to kind of work out what's happening initially. But if I can draw your attention to the eyes of some of the people, if you have a look here, 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 you can see that their attention is focused to something that's about to happen here. We have here this wandering, lonely Sikh warrior traveller who has laid down his weapons, he's taken his shoes off, he looks very comfortable, he looks very pleased. There's all sorts of things happening here, there's music being played, there's food being prepared. But if you have a look a little bit more closely, you can see that he's about to be killed. The man behind him, a thug, is about to kill him, assassinate him in the typical thuggy fashion with a silver rupee wound in a handkerchief and he's about to wrap it around his neck and press that on his Adam's apple. And that's what you can see here. This isn't just any old group that has been gathering. This is a group of thugs. This is a group of thuggies. They all know one another. They make these camps, they entice these wandering travellers and when they feel comfortable, when that moment comes to strike, the wife of the leader clicks her fingers and that's when it's time to kill. When this painting was first acquired, it needed a little bit of restoration. And uh, it went to the restorer, and this whole story was explained to the restorer. And uh, a day or two later, he calls back and he says, that a friend of his who used to live in India wandered into his gallery, and he saw this picture and immediately said, something bad's about to happen here. And the restorer said, how, how do you know something bad's about to happen? He said, it's obvious. He said, because Ganesh has his trunk pointing to the right-hand side. He said, you're about to feel the anger of Ganesh, the wrath of Ganesh. This isn't the Ganesh that most people might have in their homes that's associated with prosperity and peace, but this is an, an angrier version of Ganesh. 
Another lady who came into this exhibition and saw this picture, she also spotted that something bad was about to happen. And she said that the shoe shouldn't be upside down. She said in Indian tradition, it was bad luck for a shoe to be upside down. Scherf, the artist, we know now why he makes this Akali Nahang, this Sikh warrior, the subject of this picture. He makes him the victim in this picture because of that incident at the Golden Temple. To add insult to injury, what does he do? Why did, he, why did those warriors attempt his life at the Golden Temple? They thought he was smoking. So what does he do in the picture? He seats him next to the man with the hooker pipe to add insult to injury. The final piece of this puzzle was understanding what Scherf may have actually looked like himself. A researcher from Budapest got in touch and shared a self-portrait of Scherf with us. And you might be surprised to learn that he looks remarkably similar to the assassin himself.